the media coverage of what is going on in Israel. And uh, we've been seeing this slow build up of coverage, uh, you know, and it's very difficult not to be impacted by what is going on. I mean, what we read in the media has an impact on us, whether we like it or not. And uh, for the last number of months, a lot of people have been saying, you know, October is October, you know, things are going to get very interesting in October. Things are going to heat up in October, the October event. And uh, I just hear some in some of the media uh, hyping up this, what happened in Israel, which is truly horrific. Uh, it's saying it's the worst it's the worst atrocity since the Holocaust. That's what's being said in the media. Um, and I mean, we can't be, just ignore the what is happening in our world at this moment in time. We have a war now in Israel. This is what they're calling it. We have a war in Ukraine. Um, we have Iran in the middle of all of this funding, you know, the Iran is funding, for example, the the drones. They've built the drones that that Russia is using to bomb Ukraine. And they are funding Hamas in the Middle East. I mean, this these arms didn't pop out of norm, nowhere. These rockets didn't pop out of nowhere. The funding and so forth didn't pop out of nowhere. But I just wanted to read you one thing that was said 50 years ago. 50 years ago, because, uh, you know... I think in these times it's it's inter it's it's important for us to kind of recognize what we're in. For some reason today, I, I do advise you to read a book called uh, Lord of the World by a priest Benson. He wrote that a hundred years ago, and especially the ending of that book, it's it's very interesting. But I, I'm going to read you a, a a message that was given on the thirteenth of October, nineteen seventy three, exactly fifty years ago this week. Listen to this message. As I've told you, if men do not repent and better themselves, the Father will inflict a, a terrible punishment on all humanity. It would be a punishment greater than the deluge, such as one never seen before. Fire will fall from the sky and wipe out a great part of humanity, the good as well as the bad, sparing neither priest nor faithful. The survivors will find themselves so desolate they will envy the dead. The only arms which will remain for you will be the rosary and the sign left by my son. Each day recite the prayers of the rosary. With the rosary, pray for the Pope, the bishops and the priests. The work of the devil will infiltrate into the church in such a way that you will see cardinals opposing cardinals, bishops opposing bishops. And priests who venerate me will be scorned and opposed by their confreres. Churches and altars will be sacked. The church will be full of those who accept compromises. And the demon will press many priests and consecrated souls to leave the service of the Lord. The demon will be especially implacable against souls consecrated to God. The thought of the loss of so many souls is a cause of my sadness. If sins increase in number and gravity, there will be no longer pardon for them. With courage, speak to your superior. He will know how to encourage one of you to pray, to, to encourage each of you to pray and to accomplish works of reparation. This was a message given to Sister uh, Agnes Asagawa in Akita, Japan, 50 years ago on the 13th of October, 1973. The parallels with Akita and Fatima have not been lost on many people. There is an account, there are witnesses to an account. I mean, Bishop Ito has approved this message, so it has local ecclesiastical approval. He went to Rome and spoke to Cardinal Ratzinger, and supposedly Cardinal Ratzinger said it's, it's similar to Fatima. But there's no document on that, so that could... But do are we going to doubt um, <clears throat> Pope Ratz, uh, Cardinal Ratzinger saying that? It is the same parallel, 39 degrees, um, Akita and Fatima. They're both on the on the west coast of, of, of the respective countries. And, um, you know, Her Lady has been sending very, very clear messages. Like in Quibejo in Rwanda, 10 years before a million people were killed. 
You know, she came and she gave a message. That's the, the reality. And there are many people in the church are saying, look, our ladies saying things that seem to be happening in this in our world that seem to have played out very precise, very, very precise, very direct, very real. And we look at humanity today at this moment in time, we see what's going on in, in Israel and we see the conflict now being stoked in the world. We're seeing, you know, people are, are I see it in social media, I see it among people called to take sides you know, and um, and the hatred and the hatred being sown by the media in the lives of people because we see these horrific things. And, you know, we 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 see the, the, the horror of war, the horror of brutality. Uh, and and, uh, and and in and this moment of time, we're called to embody what Christ would do to love one another as I have loved you to put on to be him in this moment. Nothing will be achieved by killing people, by destroying people's lives, by hatred. I mean, hatred isn't from God. And yet this is what the media now in this moment in time is is, is causing us to to is, is, is driving people to have as, as a hatred against either one group or the other group. And not just in Israel, but we see it in, in Russia and Ukraine. You know, the, 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 that country, 500,000, over 500,000 people have been killed in that Russia-Ukraine war, which is uh, doesn't seem to be ending. And now we have American troops, oh, American tr troops on the coast of Israel. I mean, this is this is the truth. We have American troops on the coast of Israel. Uh, we don't know how this war will escalate. And it's uh, well, many of us have been saying this is going to happen in October. We like when October started, we were just saying, what is going to happen? How is this month going to play out? Because we have the Cardinals against Cardinals this month. Th that's that has played out. We have Cardinals against Cardinals, priests against uh, priests, uh, bishops against priests. If you have a good priest that is Marian, that 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 loves the faith, you see him scorned, you know. Um, I'm here in uh, in the Diocese of Toulon, here in France at the moment, and uh, there, there are a number of good men here, that, that faithful men, good men that love the faith and um, love Our Lady, and there's, a, you know, it's, it's, it's not easy for them. There, there, there's, a, there's a pause in ordinations here in the Diocese, <laughs> and uh, you know, it's it's a it's a it, we we see this conflict in the church. We see this conflict in the world, and uh, we have been warned. We have been warned. When you turn away from God, you bring chastisement on our, on yourself. And in the church now, we seem to have we seem to be unable to with with uh, with love with real love, to preach the gospel. We seem to be unable to stand up and say to the world, what is the message that, that Christ left, left us? What is the message of, of, that, that us Catholics believe in? We're unable to say it. We don't want to exclude anybody. We, don't, we want to be so merciful, we're not going to exclude anybody because everybody's welcome. And no matter what you are, what you've done, or whatever way you live, doesn't matter, you're all welcome. That's not exactly what the what the what the church is saying, but when you ask simple catech, simple questions of the catechism today can't be answered. You know what should we bless? Should we? We see in Malta. Listen, in Malta now they have come out. They've publicised it that there's going to be a couples mass every week or every, in Malta. This is this is public knowledge. In Malta, there's a couples mass, so couples can come along to this mass. Whatever way you're living, doesn't matter. You come along to this mass because we're not going to say anything to you. We're not going to, we're not going to pastor you or or or, or, or catechize you anymore. No, 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 no. Everybody's welcome. Doesn't you don't need to change your life. Come along as you are, you couples. Um, you know, um, you know what next? Will will we be selling off churches to convert them into mosques? Oh, sorry, we're already doing that in the north, in the Netherlands, and in Belgium. Because the, the Catholics have completely abandoned the faith. And what are they going to do with empty churches? Just sell them off. It is happening. This is where we are in 2023. 
I don't, I'm not inventing this. I'm asking Catholics, look at what has happened. Look at what Our Lady said 50 years ago and what we're living today in the church and in the world. We have turned away from our Lord. Shepherds have forgotten to be shepherds. You know, to be the good shepherd is to shepherd, is to lead, is to form, is to direct, is to form consciences. What is sin? What is not sin? Sin isn't what you make it up to be. Now, my sin is different to your sin. And you can do one thing and I can do the other. But look, we can't, we can't judge anything anymore because we've arrived to this state in the world where we can't say what a sin is. Simple, pure, simple. Stand up and say, well, sorry, from the earliest times in the church, we said this is a sin and this isn't. This is the way you live the Christian life and this is the way. This is not Christian life. Basics, basics of the church. And yet we are in the middle of interesting confusion in the church. And we see cardinals against cardinals. It was Our Lady warned us 50 years ago about this. We go back another uh, 10 years before that, we go to Garabandal. We get the same message. What does Our Lady of Garabandal say 10 years before that? Before that, even the Vatican Council had even finished. Many cardinals, many bishops and many priests are on the path of perdition. And they take many souls with them. The Eucharist, to the Eucharist, there is given less and less importance. That was Garabandal, 1965. June, 1965. Has less and less importance been given to the Eucharist 60 years later? Yes. We look around the church, look around Catholic world. Less and less has been given, importance has been given to the Eucharist. And, are many car many cardinals, many priests, many bishops and many priests on the way to perdition? Well, yes, you are. You are. When you when when you when you cover up abuse, commit abuse, fail to preach the truth of the faith, fail to lead, fail to shepherd, fail to stand forward. I mean, we have one job as Catholics, as Christians, is to is to is to give the faith. It's to live the faith, give the faith, preach the faith. You know, what is right? What is wrong? What is the way of perfection in our Christian, in our Catholic Church that has been lived for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years? What is that way of perfection? What is the way that leads to God? And what is the way that leads us away from God? You know, the basics of our faith seem to be up for debate in this moment in time. You know, and as I said, you know, look no further than look no further than Malta. Look at Germany, look at the Flemish bishops. You know, the Pope gave his response on on, on blessing same sex couples, and it has caused an, a lot of a lot of debate. But the Flemish bishops they produced a blessing, a formal blessing for same sex couples. They produced this blessing. They said, this is this is what we're going to use in, in, in and um, and they said, oh, well, we're we're following a Morris Laetitia. We're we're following the, what the Pope seems to have, have approved. And it's not like there's there is there is confusion and there is debate. It is happening. You know, I see some people trying to explain it away and I say some people trying to polarize the church one way or the other. But. This is what we are living in this moment in the church. This is what we're living in the world, where we are racing away from God, and um, and I and again I go back to Akita. I go back to the thirteenth of October, nineteen seventy three, fifty years ago. Yeah, you know, if we turn away from if we turn away from our Lord, we bring chastisement on ourselves. Um. <laughs> And today, in a, in a sense, you know, we see we see we see fire falling from the sky in what is happening in in Israel on both sides. We see it in um, we see it in in Russia and in Ukraine. And do you think that either these sides are going to back down? You know, Hamas, which is su supported by Iran, uh, Iran, which is an ally of Russia, uh, you know. We see um, weapons being sent from North Korea into uh, Russia, escalating. We see, you know, 
And again, I go back to read the end of the Lord of the World. Read, 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 read the Lord of the World, uh, written 100 years ago. It was, was very prophetic in a sense. I, I suppose after this video, which has gone on for 15 minutes, I'm asking people to think, to think about, to read these messages. And Our Lady warns us. She's a real mother. You know, and real mothers say when they see their kids are going to burn themselves in the fire, they, they, they run over and say, don't touch that. Be careful. You know, real mothers warn their kids, you know, you're, you're going down the wrong path. Be careful what you're doing. You know, you're going to get yourself um, injured with what you're doing. That's what real mothers do when they see their children are in harm. When Our Lady sees us in, har in harm's way and she's asking us, to turn away from the harm that we're walking ourselves into. And war, where are we going? The confusion in the church, where are we going? And so, you know, that's, the, I suppose I'm kind of collecting this all together because, you know, a lot of us have been seeing this for, for a long time. And it's time now to, to turn to our Lord, to turn to who is real in the Eucharist. Our Lord is in, Israel in the Eucharist. And it's time to lead to stand up and be leaders and to say to the world, what is the truth that we need to align our lives to at this critical moment in, 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 in time? Um, because a lot of people are, are seeing the same thing. We're all seeing, you know, and our, and our Lord seems to be moving in a very intense and direct way. Turn to him, turn to our Lord in this moment in time. Um, you know, some people that don't have faith might be looking at this video and thinking I'm crazy. You know, Robert Nugent is crazy, but... As I said, I'm I'm just saying what was said 50 years ago. You know, very clear thing said 50 years ago, 60 years ago, nearly 100 years ago. You have Fatima, and you you know you have a series of of, of messages from heaven, <laughs> averting us to what we're what we're walking ourselves into. And Our Lady spoke about the Second World War. Now she's she spoke about what we're living in. To, at this moment in time and um you know we can't ignore what she says like we like what she said in rwanda and Quebec. you know she she had she warned she warned them um and you know if we if we if we're so if we don't listen to her we're, we we are you know we have only ourselves to, to blame for the chastisement we're bringing on ourselves and i suppose with the, what's happening in the world now when you see the media stoking up a war, uh, because that's what's happening. You have the, the pre-op of a war being, you know, prepared in the media. We see it. Um, I find it very strange that, and, and, and I find it very strange that one of the most technically advanced countries in the world was totally oblivious to what was going to happen the other day. I, I, I simply can't understand that. Um, but you know that we live in these times, and um, and and so I'm just asking priests, bishops, clergy, faithful, turn to our Lord, pray. You know, turn to turn to Him, pray. We we need to be a force for for good in this world, and not a force for division. And pray for the Pope. Um, but um, as as I as I said, read the messages, read the messages. That were given, you know, well in advance, so that we know that they're from heaven. And look at what we're living in through today. You know, we 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 have a Catholic Church now that can't tell us, that can't answer basic questions of the Catechism anymore, basic questions of faith and morals. You'd wonder, God, where, where have we where where have we landed ourselves to? Um, so you know, um, turn to the Eucharist. You know, our Lord is present, body, blood, soul, and divinity there. We, he, and he wants us to encounter him because he really does transform our life. And if Catholics saw this, they would live differently. You would live differently if you knew who, if you, if you, if you'd encountered Christ. And this is what we're failing the world. We're failing Christ by not preaching him and leading people to him. Anyway, pray for the church and pray for the Pope. Uh, in this special time and and you know as we approach friday this friday um just pray for pray for peace um because 
the, you know, I think a lot of people are, are kind of seeing the same the same signs of the times, um, and uh, and Friday the thirteenth of October will be an interesting day. So God bless you. Take care. Pray pray for the church. God bless you.